throw a stone in the air and Littleton, it's going to come down and hit a creative person. The place is lousy with poets and painters and musicians. And it's just infested. I come here in 1978. I always remember walking down Folles Road, which is just over my shoulder, with Bill Hammond, who lived across there as well. And Bill said to me, I found my place. And I went, I found my place as well. I'm sitting quiet in the shade. There was just something about this location. Both of us just got hooked in. I mean, I'm still here. Where else are you going to get this big view and feel like you're sort of embraced by something? I mean, I always call Littleton like the art centre, the real art centre of Christchurch. I mean, it's, it's huge virtually for me. It isn't Christchurch. When I came here in 87 and Christchurch was flat, um, it was pretty stayed, it was very white, very masculine as well. I mean, you come through the tunnel and suddenly it's gay Peruvian sailors and that's cracking, that's interesting to me. And also it was dirt cheap. There was an auction sign. I rung up the agent and said to the guy, you know, what, what was the deal with the house? Did it sell? He said, didn't sell. He said, do you want to make an offer? I said, ah, $3,000. 30 days later, he rang up and said, you've bought that house. What was Littleton like then? It was so different. Uh, it was much more a port town. It was considered by anyone who lived on the other side, through the tunnel, as to be dark and poor and rough. People would say, oh, it's dark, and you know, there's no sun, and everything go, yeah. I used to live in the building that was on that corner. Right on the main street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Its character, obviously, to me, comes from the waterfront and the wharf and, the, and, and that tradition. It's an egalitarian place, and I think that's a union ethos. And it's a, it's a border, so that, you know, it's an international gateway. You hear Russian, and so you're forced to rub shoulders with diversity. You kind of have to be a little more tolerant, or you're going to be in a fist fight every second day. I'm a resident at the Creative Residencies here at Te Matataki Atoyota, the Christchurch Art Centre. Just little tonights don't get through the tunnel that much. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic kind of tiki form, and I'm sort of just figuring out as I go what it's about. I think, I think it might be a gardener, maybe some unnamed gardener planting his kumalau. When I was a kid, it was a real kind of stabby place. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It was really quite rough. If you didn't have a car, you couldn't get out. And growing up in the 90s, there were artists all around us, working artists. On top of that, it's like we live in a painting. You know, we've got all the hills all around us. We're a very creative family. Artists and poets and playwrights and actors. And my dad would always say, oh, who's going to fix my car? And who's going to look after me when I get old? And so, yeah, wow. Well, that's what he gets for letting us do what we want, follow our dreams. <laughs> the thing about Littleton, half of us don't get any sun because we're on the wrong side of the hill. And so everyone has to come to the main street to get their vitamin D. And so that, that creates community, you know. Everyone goes to the same supermarket, everyone's getting Auntie Steve's coffee. It made people like Jason Gregg and the other local artists really accessible, you know, that is walking through town. It's busy times um, because I've got this big show at the Christchurch Art Gallery and um, it's a sort of once in a lifetime opportunity really. But it's taken about three years work to sort of get to this point do you sort of slightly feel like you're on holiday when you come through the tunnel? <laughs> and there's lots of musicians and artists and all sorts of people. 
You can be just as sociable as you want to be. You can walk downtown in your overalls. It always feels good. It always feels good. Love it here. The visual artists, they always talked about the hue, the hue of Littleton, you know, the look of it. But as a musician, it's the feel. You find the cobblestones in Amsterdam, you find things that as an artist make you feel. You don't want to ever not feel as an artist. It's the vibe. And I could make noise late at night, which was unusual. You can't do that in a suburb particularly. It attracts people that maybe haven't fitted in in a lot of other places. And of course, like-minded people start banding together. Uh, I'm Marlon Williams, and um, behind me is the, little, the London Street Dairy in Littleton, um, where I worked for many a year. The February, you know, the, the big earthquake, um, I was sitting across the road over at the coffee company with Delaney Davidson. We were in the middle of having a long black and planning our, um, our first Sad But True album. For people in Littleton, with, with the music community so close, it was a real, you know, it was a chance to, you know, represent something and to stand up, I guess. Painted boats and duffel coats, lucky me. The Harbour Union definitely was a, um, a very consolidated effort by everyone in Littleton, everyone who makes music, and within a very short time after it happened, we we had an album. There was Delaney and, and Marlon and Adam McGraw and Easton. They'd been friends before the earthquakes, but the earthquakes really turned it into a, a, a real strong collective of people. If you look at the number of artists that have come out of here in the last 20 years, it's quite phenomenal, really. Don't hear like Raglan or Ponsonby or or Port Chalmers or anywhere that gets the same amount of publicity or recognition. I've definitely been guilty of writing on a press release based in Littleton. You know what I mean? I recorded up at uh, the sitting room, which has been in with the studio, just up that road. Locally made. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's real nice. Walk there. <laughs> One of the biggest things that people will talk about when they are talking about lifestyle and everything, they'll talk about community a sense of community. It's the community in Littleton, built up on the arts. You know, you prepare your soil to plant seeds and that soil is still prepared for creative people. These are tuki parai here, tuki trophies for the New Zealand Civil um, Contractor Awards to be held at the Christchurch Convention Centre next week. I came to Littleton from living in the central city and working in a, working in a shed in a beautiful garden in St Albans or whatever, but I was so lonely. I came to Littleton and I just felt immediately at home. I think as a potter as well, because it's sort of geological side of things and this is a really interesting geological place. We're inside like the, yeah, crater of like a volcano. I try and um, involve that all in my practice. You know, I dug this up from out the back, the, uh, the loess that's in it. Um, so it's actually like 
of this very place. You've found your home. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm going to live here for the rest of my life. That's for sure. <laughs> Being an artist in a place like Littleton or in a place with a housing market like this is difficult because on top of your real life, on top of your house and your kids and all the rest of it, trying to maintain the practice, that means another space. So we're moving back to Palmerston North where we study. We've got some roots there because it's more affordable. Heartbreaking. It's a place where we buried our children's whenua, their placentas. We're sad that we have to leave, but look, we'll be back. <laughs> We're still there. Yep. We're literally buried in the ground. It is a stunning place. It's soul feeding. It has all the things that make you get up in the morning and go, I love life. That's why I've loved living here. I still love it. You know, I'm, as long as I can get down those steps, mate, I'll be here. <laughs>